Hi everyone, welcome to this next uh, video in the series of um, building up this GT40 uh, replica that, from our uh, flat pack chassis kit. Um, hopefully if you've discovered the channel you'll have already seen there's a, a ton of videos on actually making the chassis and there was one uh, previously on uh, the panelling of it or doing the like first few panels. In this video I'm going to cover a little technique that I actually stole off of um, Car Builder Solutions and um, it's a way of marking out evenly spaced rivet holes in panels. It's really simple, ever so clever. I wish I'd thought of it but I didn't. Um, in the description below uh, I'll put a link to Car Builder Solutions because um, they're a really good supplier of, of kit car parts in general. Uh, lots of interesting products they've got. Um, not all of which are suitable for a GT40 build, but many are. They're also um, very suitable for Lotus 7s and Cobras and all sorts of kit cars and classic cars. So well worth uh, having a look at their website. Really nice guys. Um, Neil and Matthew, father and son that run the company, been involved in kit cars for years and years and um, couldn't wish to meet uh, more friendly and helpful people. So, saying that, basically their their way of doing it, that I'm so pleased to be able to uh, use and show you, is basically to take some elastic and mark a series of holes on the elastic, evenly spaced. In this case I did them at 10 millimeters, such that when you then stretch the elastic out across your panel, your holes move apart, but they remain evenly spaced. Um, due to some technical issues with my with dropping my phone yesterday, um, I'm recording this introduction after having done uh, the rest of the video. Um, so apologies for that. But I did want to just quickly do the introduction to make sure that the rest of the video made sense. So the first thing to do, obviously, with the elastic in its normal unstretched form, mark holes, uh, mark spots every 10 millimeters. Like so. Now, when we spread it out across the panel, you can see that they evenly space out. I'm going to put a few more on because this panel is quite long. Okay, so as you can see, I've, I've marked my evenly spaced holes. Now how I did that was after marking the center line of where I wanted the rivets to go along the tube, so 20 millimeters in from the edge, I've put the start and the end hole 20 millimeters in from each end. Then I've got my elastic lined up hole on the end and clamped it, stretched it out until I'm happy with the hole spacing that I've got. And in this case, 
I've skipped every other mark. So now I've got a nice even hole spacing across the length of the panel. Now what I'm going to do is drill out these holes four millimeter or drill at each mark four millimeter hole and then I should transfer that to the chassis when I fit it, when I've put the panel on in the position that I'm happy with and clamped it. So I'll do that, I'll transfer those holes over first, then I'll come back and carry on with the rest of them. Right, so for um, drilling these panels off, four millimeter drills, I bought a pack of them, there's 10 in a pack. Um, if you go into a fastening supply company, hardware place, probably not places like B&Q or Homebase, uh, you'll be able to buy a pack of these called jobber drills, or they're referred to as jobber drills. Um, they're really good. They do last, but it's nice to have really sharp drills for doing this, because um, you're going to be drilling an awful lot of holes. Can't remember how much they charged me for them, probably six or seven pounds, so maybe less than a pound a drill. If you said that maximum 10 pounds a pack, um, really good value, you never get that in a, hot, in a DIY store. So it uh, doesn't really matter what brand they are, most of the places, if you ask for jobber drills, will give you, you know, their preferred brand. They're all good, don't worry about too much. Uh, right, drilling off these holes. It's nice to drill into something like wood uh, so you don't slip through and scratch anything that you don't want to scratch. I'll just find something to do that with. So a bit of old little sterling ball. That's that drilled off. And when you drill through anything, the backside will be a bit burred. The best way to deal with that is to get quite a large drill. I'm just going to get my half inch drill and just twist it in the back of each hole just to knock the burrs off. If you don't want the pat, the panel being held off by a bit of swarf. Okay, so 716 drill this one. And just by hand, I'm just going to twist it in the back of each hole just to knock the swarf off. So I can remove my tape now.
clamp the panel in the place I want to be. I'll use that as my template for drilling through the holes into the chassis. Okay, so as you start drilling off these holes, what I like to do is put a rivet in, in the hole, just so you, you keep it from possibly twisting or whatever, so that when you next come back to put the panel on, um, you know all the holes are lined up and they'll go straight in. Uh, for this job, because I've got black chassis and black rivets, uh, and black panels, I found these nice black rivets, um, so they blend in nicely. Uh, these are a standard thing, they are available, uh, but you won't find them in any hardware store. They're not the sort of thing that they keep in stock. Um, so you'll probably have to order them. Um, so right. Next thing to think about with panels is that there are in places panels that overlap and need to share rivets. So you have to set that um, panel up at the same time so that you can drill through and make sure that you've uh, got all the right holes aligned. So for example, with this one, we we'll clamp it in place, do the same thing, put down our masking tape, use the elastic to get a neat hole spacing, drill through, but drill through both panels and into the chassis so they're all, all aligned. And the other thing to think about and try and bear in mind with panels is you can't necessarily fit them completely at, at the stage that you're at. So like this one, I'm going to drill, obviously I've going to fit these rivets all around this edge, but down this edge, later on when we come to fit the bodywork, the side seals that fit under here need to use this edge for their rivets. So we'll sandwich this panel with the bodywork. So right now, there's no point in putting any rivets in here. They'll only potentially get in the way when we put the bodywork on. And then finally, before we finish fitting the uh, panel and rivet it on, we need some sealant because the idea of panelling it is that we're waterproof in the cockpit. Um, so I've picked up this. It wasn't expensive. Uh, RTV silicon sealant. It's black to go with the panel. I can use it for anywhere where I need to uh, like fill up a gap or something without it standing out. Uh, and also obviously it's got an adhesive property for keeping the panel down, but it's not so bad that if you ever needed to take the panel off, you'd, um, you'd struggle too much. You just need to peel the panel away. Now the thing that I wanted to show with the sealant that makes a difference between a neat job and a not so neat job is how you trim the nozzle in order to get the bead that you want. What you want is a, in cross section, you want a triangular or pyramid shape um, sealant seal so that you get a nice bead and, when, and it's quite high, so when you push the panel into it, it spreads evenly and neatly, but doesn't come out the, out the edge. And the best way to do that is to cut your nozzle off. So you've got maybe a five millimeter hole like this, and then cut a deep V into it. know if that's perfectly clear, hopefully so. And then you apply the silicon like this and it will leave a 
pyramid shape or a triangular shape cross section of of sealant down on the tube and like I say when you push the panel into it it spreads out nice and evenly and the last thing I really want to say in this video I think the riveting process is pretty uh, self-explanatory I wouldn't bother trying to do it by hand with a hand riveter one or two fine but when you've got many hundreds of rivets like you're going to be putting into this chassis uh, there's no way that you're going to do it uh, without killing your hands um, and you just won't put very many in in a session you'll be doing it forever so you can get the lazy tong riveters if you don't have a compressor but if you've got a compressor well worth investing 30 35 pounds or whatever in one of these pneumatic um, rivet guns uh, if you get the cheap ones they'll probably do your do your chassis uh, any more than that they'll probably screw up but you can always take it back under guarantee and get your money back or get another one um, this one's done a couple of chassis and it's still still working um, but like I say these cheap Clark ones are not known for being uh, overly good but like I say doing one chassis is probably okay right so for this video I think I'm going to call that it uh, hopefully that's sort of set you up hopefully the panelling of the chassis together with the other videos and the documents that are online in the shared Dropbox folder which you'll have access to if you're building one of these cars um, makes the panelling as self-explanatory as possible if you've got any questions you can always uh, drop me a line or leave a comment um, but good luck hope you enjoyed the video please like the video if you do and subscribe to the channel so that you get notifications if I do other videos um, I'm probably going to do some other videos on the more technical uh, panels that go around the back some of the ones that are a bit more uh, difficult to fold um, and when I do that when I come to it I'll probably just do a quick example of how this bead goes down and how this riveter works uh, I think it's obvious um, but if I show you an example, you might just see how, um, how easy it is to do. But for now, I'm going to call that a date. Thanks for watching.